All right. <clears throat> so today what we have starting is a Deco System, Data East Corporation, Astro Fighter. It's a card cage, kind of similar to Gorf, Wizard of War. Um, it looks like it's got three boards with a sub board on this guy. It looks like this is the ROM board. You see it's a it's a cage system. And we got three boards in the, the set. This one ain't much to this one. Hmm. Well, this looks like it's the ROM board with the sound board on top of it. This is going to be the CPU board. Excuse me, I want to be able to see what I'm looking at. This is going to be your CPU board. It's a 6502 based system. You got a couple rows of RAM here. These are 4027 RAM. Um, these are 4027, these three. And then these are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So it looks like we have 8 bit ram right here and then we have three more bits here that are probably separate for something i would say because these are a faster speed ram the four four one one sixes are definitely a different speed so this is probably your eight bit um video uh scratch ram kind of a la missile command um missile command uses eight of these as well so these are probably scratch RAM or something like that, these three. I would imagine. Um, yeah. I don't see any other RAM on here. And you got your... I'm going to have to remove that to check it out. And then this one, I don't know. This is... There's not much to this. These aren't labeled as to what they are. I'll see it in the schematic though. It's kind of the interface, you know, this is where your harness plugs in, so it's the interface out. Maybe it samples inputs or this could be your I.O. board maybe. I.O. board and video out, maybe this is the video prom chip I don't see much analog conversion um, actually there's some transistors here that might be involved in the uh, might be involved in um, converting the anal uh, digital signals this is probably the bipolar ROM that's the color prom out and then you got transistors and Resistor networks here to turn that into an analog RGB signal that's sent out. That's probably what this board is. Yeah. So, um, you know what I need to do, first and foremost? Because these boards kind of have to be arranged a certain way in this cage. So, what I'm not going to be able to do is really work on I need a good solution to work on this set outside of this cage so I bought from arcade parts and repair I bought everything to put together a harness for this which includes three 56 pin basically JAMA edges some wire I got wire packs you know some 10 foot wire hanks to wire everything up and yeah so it's going to take a while to build that i got my i got my nice i'm going to just set these aside over here and you know what's kind of you really need to watch these are offset so this probably doesn't go in this way yeah good 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 they're keyed these will only go in one way so that's actually very good. Okay. 
the cage is really nice and clean. This is a this is a nice clean board set. So I went and I had my schematics for Astro Fighter Astro Fighter printed. It's on basically a card stock, card stock paper. It's a heavier, heavier paper, which is nice. And I just went ahead and printed off the whole schematic so that we have that. But first thing first I have to do is I have to build that harness. And I noticed that some of these, like the coin switches and stuff, are wired kind of old school to where they're using the normally open, normally closed, and common on these. So I bought some micro switches to wire that up. And I bought a few extra because whenever I'm doing harnesses, a lot of times I am scrambling for micro switches. So I bought a few extra. And I bought a bunch of, uh, like I said, the wire just because... Um, just because I want it to be uniform kind of a thing so yeah let me go ahead and build up this harness and then we will be back okay mission number one has been accomplished I have my inner connect for all three boards done Took most of today, well, a few hours anyway, to do that. And I got my power lead running off to plug into my power supply. So, yeah. Excellent. Next, I have to do a, uh, I have to make, I have to make the edge connector that comes off of this with all of the inputs and video and all that. So, yeah. Good stuff. All right. Well, let me uh, do that one. And uh, we'll be ready to go, hopefully. Ready to plug it in and give some, start doing some testing. All right, well, I think we are done with our harness. We have this plugs into the I.O. board. And this interfaces to my connector here. And this interfaces the three boards together. Power right here. And I got coin and service switch. They use both normally open and normally close on those. So I, I wired those up. You see coin. This one says service. Yeah, so. Got my audio. This is uh, uses an external amplifier for the audio. So I've got this to run to my audio amp. And I got a start wire player start after I coin it so I think we're ready to hook this thing up and see what we get okay we're hooked up it's pretty cool isn't it I like it nice little setup for the deco system but we are hooked up and turned on and we get that Here's some lines, some bars. So I will get the little scope turned on. And we'll just start poking around on around the CPU. Make sure we're getting some CPU signals and stuff like that. But yeah, nice little setup here I got. Okay, yeah, let's do that. Okay, so <clears throat> I actually opened this ROM board up and just unplugged the power to the soundboard. I don't really care about sound right now. I wish this was removable, but this looks like these cables are soldered into the boards. So this, you'd have to desolder that to remove it, and we're not going to do that. So we'll just open it up and lay it over. <clears throat> and I've got it on, and I probed around the CPU and if you can see back there it's all active yeah and I went ahead and I probed the actual socket pin and the pin on the chip to make sure that there was connection through the socket these sockets that needs to be replaced anyway probably but yeah so right now we're looking at a mystery it's the CPUs trying to work it's not in reset this is 6502. There's no reset. So 
So we've got some RAM issue, ROM issue, something. Something's not right with this thing. It won't run. You know what I need to do? CPU. Um, let me get the schematic. Look for the CPU board. Audio. ROM. I.O. CPU. Here's the CPU board schematic. Our CPU is... Alright, it says CPU board, right? Where's the CPU? How can you have a CPU board schematic and no 6502 CPU? Oh, there it is. Okay. Our interrupt is on pin 4. Oh. It's low all the time. Is this an active low interrupt? I think it is. And pin 6 is NMI, which is also low all the time. That would tell me that this thing is being, it's stuck in, like it's, it's stuck and not being able to, to work. NMI. Interrupt. 4A is a 112. Let's look at 4A. Four. A is way over here. It's a 112. And on the schematic, it's right here. And we've got a clock on pin 13. And this is looks like crap. Little scope is not very clear. Okay. Um, J and K are pulled high. We have a clear on pin. Four. One, two, three, four. So it's not cleared. And we do have a clock. And 13. One, two, three, four. There is a clock. This thing should be toggling because K is grounded, which is 12. That's grounded. I hate how the signals, these signals look. They look like crap. Six would be... Okay. Yeah, see this? Six is signal. And then the six is Q and seven is not Q. And six is toggling and seven is not. So... Something ain't right there. Is the CPU holding that low? Is the CPU bad? I mean, that's an easy check. It's either that or we have a bad 112. I'll grab a 112 really quick. Somewhat quick. All of these 112s that I have, just about all of them are board pulls. Let's just see what happens. Let's see what happens if I jump this over this.
Lantern. We got another line of nonsense on the screen. Let's do this. Let's take pin 7 and remove it out of this equation. Jump this and then see what pin 7 tells us. Is it toggling? No. 6 is toggling. 7 is not. Or is it 9 and 7? It is. It's 9 and 7, not 6 and 7. A 112. Hmm. Why is it not toggling? It should be toggling, right? It's got a clock. That's high. Oh, that comes from a RAM chip. The signal to toggle that, maybe, wait a minute. It is, 9 is Q. 9 is Q. 9 is Q, not 6. 9 is Q, 7 is not Q. And it's high, which does make sense, because we have a clock, and J being high and K being low, it's just going to be high. It's just going to be high until it gets a clear, and then that it will it'll clear Q to low. That's how this is working. It's working on the clear signal. So when it clears, and but this the clock signal comes from RAM. It looks like no, it doesn't. It's hard to tell. The clear signal. It's clocking the data into the RAM. Where's that come from? Oh, it's a signal from a 138. It's a signal from a 138, but this could totally be. All right, we know that interrupt is not the issue. It's, it's stuck where it is because it's a software interrupt. Is the, uh, it's, it's triggered by a 138, which gets an address. So it, it's actually a software-driven thing. So that's not an issue. But the non-maskable interrupt comes in on a couple of inverters from another board. And 3E is an inverter that inverts that signal twice. So let's look at 3E. It's right here. Okay. Let's look at 3 out to 4. Let's look at this. Let's just look at all, everything on here. Okay. Um, okay. Low. High. Wait a minute. Okay, I'm not seeing that. I'm just seeing that. That's not a signal, I, I don't think. Okay. But then you have clearly have a low here. So this should be... That should be going high. Boy, I don't know. Well, let's get us a zero four. Let's 
Put a 0, 4 over top of that. Let's see what happens. It's definitely not acting right, but I don't like... It looks like it shouldn't have a signal on it anyway. I don't think that's I, I think this chip might need to be replaced because it doesn't oh, well, ouch I don't like the way that it acts that one right there don't like it you know what I could do is Seven zero eights. Yeah, this thing uses twenty seven oh eights. I just noticed that I was probing probing the EEPROM pins. I came to pin twenty and I'm like, wait, why is that negative? And then yeah, it's twenty seven oh eights. Negative five and plus twelve. That could be a problem. These things suck. So, I don't know. That's something to look for. You know what I can do? I can always throw the fluke on this, which I'll do. I mean, I'm right now I'm just kind of preliminarily looking around at some stuff. I don't like this 04. I think this could definitely cause an issue. It's not working. For one, it's just not working. You have that signal right there. That should be inverted to a low going high. And it's got that. So I, I don't like that. But I think what I'll do is grab a new 6502. Let's shut this thing off. I think I'll put a new 6502 in it and see if we get anything, any kind of life out of this thing. I don't know. This CPU seems to be working. Man, needs to be cleaned. This needs to go. That socket needs to go. But first things first, let's just grab a new CPU. Five zero two. There we go. All right, let's fire it up. See if we get anything different. Boy, we get a lot cleaner signals now. It's not doing anything. We get different lines now. Hmm. These 6502s were tested and good, but now it's not doing anything. So sure that I put I might have put that in backwards darn it I don't know I think I put that in backwards 
Okay, we have... Pin 8 is 5 volts. So let's do this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Uh-oh. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay. Eight. Yeah, this is fun. This is it goes this way. I had it in backwards. Yeah. What is ground? Pins one and twenty one are ground. So that's one twenty one. Okay, I had it in backwards. I probably ruined this. Maybe, I don't know. Probably not. Let's try it. And yeah, we get the same noisy nonsense. I can't stand that. Yeah, it's working. The CPU is working. We're not getting a reset signal. This CPU needs to be clean. The legs are really bad. The legs are really super tarnished. Really needs to be cleaned. So I'm going to do that. I think I think it's time I got to get some information on this thing. I need to get ROM information and um, fluke signatures. I need to replace this socket we'll go through all of these rams get the ram range rom range stuff all that kind of stuff i need to get some technical information on this system and then come back and start doing some testing but first things first i got to change this socket and just remember pin 1 the, the thing points that way you know i put it in backwards Thankfully, this doesn't have plus 12 or negative 5 volts, so generally with these, and I mean generally, this is not always the case, but in my experience, a lot of times, if you put a CPU in backwards and it's just a regular 5 volt ground rail CPU, they rarely die if you put them in backwards. <clears throat> so, yeah, that'll be fine. We'll clean this come back let me replace that and do some fluke stuff make sure that we're make sure that we're doing RAM and ROM checks properly okay guys what I'm doing is I'm using the fluke and I'm going through the uh, all of the chips I've got set 2 set 3 and set 1 everything written down that I might need and it looks like we have a decoding problem. It's either a decoding problem or there's only two files burnt into each of these EPROMs, which is completely possible that somebody screwed up burning these ROMs. I, I don't know. I have to decipher it. So I'm going through every range and I'm writing down the signature that I get. And I'm trying to figure out what range is what chip and uh, which chip has what data in it. So now I'm going to E, so let's do a ROM at E000 to E3FF and I'm just going to read out what is the uh, signature that it gives me. And it gives me F55B. Again, I'm getting the same two signatures over and over and over so it's kind of telling me that we have a decoding issue what I'm gonna do after this and I'll do this is off camera is I'm gonna I'm gonna hammer each one of these uh, each one of these 
ranges and I'm going to probe with my scope and find out what um, chip is being enabled so what data is being dumped that'll tell me the address location the actual address location of each of these chips that uh, that it's spitting out to me it looks like it's only reading from two locations over and over is what it looks like so I'm gonna continue to do this and then I'll be back All right. well I'm starting to see some kind of funny business over here I'm just hitting addresses and I'm looking at the schematic and it, the schematic tells me that well these 42's that address that that select all of these ROMs they get inputs from the address bus and if I I'm just right now I'm reading from 0000, 000, 000 which I know isn't a ROM thing but I just want to look at those upper address bits and they should be all low and if I look at the most significant address bit it's pulsing you can see that and that's good and then we have a low all the time which is kind of weird I mean I don't know about low all the time low all the time and pulsing well the th there's only three address bits on here this one that one and this one now let's do the inverse let's read from F F F F so they should all be one and hit enter and loop that and we have this staying high all the time this one is floating this one is floating this is a 42 and it's doing the same thing so it's like we have we have an addressing issue it looks like it looks like uh, address buffers are floating or something yeah this line's high this one's just floating. These are floating. They don't drive high at all. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll, I'm going to look into that. I'm going to look at the CPU schematic and look at the um, address going out. That'll be the next thing to look at. The address is being buffered out. I uh, seem to have found maybe my addressing issue. I think it's the connection. And I don't think it's my, my connectors. I think it's traces on the board or something like that. Two to two. That's good. That's good. Three. Okay. I'm just going to go along and make sure that I have good continuity across the boards. I'll be back. Well, very unfortunate. This edge connector is like bowed out. It's like no good. These two are fine, but this one I got to put this trans this dead transformer I got. I just stuck it on there to sandwich it. That was the problem. It wasn't getting. And right now I'm doing a RAM short from 4,000 to 5 FFF. The zero to three FF, uh, three FF, which I believe is the uh, the scratch RAM, was fine. And now this is the video RAM, I believe. And it is looking to be fine. 
So I need to put all of the ROMs back in and I'll do my ROM checks and I'm sure they'll be fine. Yes, I had floating address bits over there and it's because of this thing. So I'm going to have to fix that. I do have something that I can't find now. It's an um, edge connector. I have a, I have another edge connector I'm going to put in there. I don't, I don't it's probably underneath this. But it's a black one and it, it's it's a solid one. It's like something that was used on a uh, Space Invaders board, you know, like a Space Invaders motherboard, one of them big long ones. It's a 56 pin, but it's that style. It's a really good one. This one's just no good. Weird. So I'm going to finish this short test. I'm going to put the ROMs back in the board. I'm going to go ahead and do all of the ROM checks and then move on from there as long as the ROM checks are good, which I, I don't know. We'll see. But, uh, yeah, so, yeah, after all of that, it comes down to a bad edge connector. Bummer. Okay, well, got some good news and some bad news. And, yeah, I know. That's ridiculous. Here's that, uh, I'm going to eventually use this one. I know it's missing a, a contact right there. But I'll just use one of the ground contacts and, and put right there. This is a nice, solid connector. I'll use that. You know, i gotta, I got to put a, something heavy on that to squeeze it. That's stupid, but it is what it is. So far, I've replaced that. 04 remember I replaced this socket I put this back together I put the ROMs back in it I tested the ROMs and the RAM everything was great put this back on um, yeah so I got it all hooked up and running and I got a credit in it which is cool and I can credit it up and play it okay now it's saying game one start you can hear the sounds sounds awesome problem is if I try to fire Ain't doing nothing. We try to move left and right. It isn't doing anything. Yeah. But if I put this up here. that up here move it up a little bit now if I use my logic probe and I probe the fire this is where the fire pad is whatever you can see when I press fire the light goes out this is right when I press right the light goes out and then left when I press left the light goes out so we've got an issue with this input and we need to find out why it's not working so let's get to our schematic and go to the I.O. board and we'll start right there and start at the sampled chip it's probably a 367 or something like that okay um, here's the coin stuff and 22 it looks like it's 16 17 and 18 
21, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15. It's 15, 16, and 17. So I'm going to just write on here 15, 16, and 17. Okay, 15 is left. Player one left. 16 is player one right. They don't have these labeled. And 17 is fire. Player one fire. Okay. So let's take a look and see what's going on. The enable, oh boy. It's address A0, it's an address, darn it. I wonder. Or is that an address? Anyway, let's look at the select lines of 2D. Looks like 2D and 1H, maybe. 2D. What is that? Okay. You know what we need to do is start a game. Let me I'm gonna start a game. We should be getting see there we go. If you can see that. Could both of these be bad? I don't know about that. That's kind of... Do we have another... No, we no. that connector's got to be good, otherwise this thing would never run, I don't think. I mean, we could have two bad chips. I don't, I don't know. It's possible, right? Let's put a... Let's do that.
All right. Well, this is going to take a little looking into. I'm not sure what's going on. Well, we'll figure it out. All right. This thing's been on for about four hours. And it's uh, working great. It's pretty cool. I went online and looked this up on YouTube because I'll show you a screen that really had me like, what is that? I thought it was kind of weird. I thought this would spell out Astro Fighter, but it doesn't. It spells something that looks Japanese. I think it is after this screen. It spells something out right here. And then you guys just shoots it, and that is right. That's what it does on uh, on everything that I saw on YouTube. I thought that would spell out Astro Fighter or something like that. I have no idea what that even is, but that's it. So I am going to set this thing up, and we're going to play a game of this. Actually, before I got to the gameplay, I wanted to go ahead and put it in the cage. And now everything is in the cage. I made a little power harness. And good to go. So now we can do our gameplay. This game's pretty cool. I actually like it a lot. I would I would enjoy having one of these. But yeah, so let's give us some gameplay. start it over. Okay. Yeah, I wanted to start it over so that I can do the whole game. Coin and start. Darn it. Dang, man. It's on very easy. The dip switches are set to easy. I would need, oh, oh, I would need it easy, I'm not good, and they got by me, if they get by you, I guess they didn't get by me, if they get by you, you, you move up. Dang it! Oh, come on! Well, that's it. It's like a timed game. You have a certain amount of time to clear all of the mazes or whatever and then you fight a boss at the end. I, I'm just not I'm just not good at it. But it works great. I found a chip, a, uh, a 7404 that was bad in this. Replaced that. I replaced the socket for the CPU. I cleaned that CPU. It looked like a brand new chip when I was done with it. So that's good. Um. 
verified that all the ROMs are good. That's cool. All the RAM was good, no problems. And it's working absolutely fine. This thing's run for about four hours today. I just set it out here and forgot about it. So it's nice and solid. And it's set for two credits per coin, so good enough. There you go, Astro Fighter. See you on the next one, guys. Shout out to all the Patreon supporters. Appreciate every one of you. You all know who you are. If you want to help support the channel and, and this kind of this kind of stuff on YouTube, you know, I have a Patreon and the, the link is down low. If you want to lend some support, that would be great. That's it, guys. Thanks a lot, and we'll see you next time.